we're going to talk about toe bends. Um, we're going to use a piece of 7838 um, concave, uh, 13 inches. So traditionally with a toe bend on a front shoe, you put a centre dot in the centre. Um, but what I like to do um, when I'm teaching apprentices or if anyone's struggling with getting some symmetry in their sort of toe shape is put a couple of extra reference points in. So the way I find these reference points is I'll measure from the centre to the end of the heel. So we're about six and a half inches. So we'll chalk mark halfway in between there. So in this case, three and a quarter. And then you come inside, so that is in the middle of these two points. And whatever section you're using, you measure closer to the toe by that amount. So this is seven eight three eight. So seven eighths of an inch closer to the toe, we put a dot. And we do exactly the same with the other, other side. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna concentrate and using these as our reference points when we put a toe bend in. So we're gonna start by holding our tongs at 90 degrees to the piece of steel. And we're just gonna work on our mark. We're gonna lift our hand. Level our shoe. Turn it round, do exactly the same on our other mark, just lifting our tongue hand as we go. And now we're going to use our marks as a reference and so we're going to find a bit of bit that the shoe fits on and we're just going to knock the shoe down on our mark. And the same on the other side. Got our toe bend in. I'm just going to smooth out any bumps really gently because concave, you don't want to be forging it too much. So the bit of bic that the toe fits on, you're just going to run your hammer around gently. Keep it level. Make sure you keep your inside edge down. You don't want any sole pressure and you should have a relatively symmetrical toe bend because you've done exactly the same to both sides. If not, you can make slight alterations using your reference points again, or if you've got a toe which isn't symmetrical, you can make adjustments to one side or the other. So find a bit of bic that your shoe fits on and use your reference point. So work this side of your reference point if you want to tighten your toe on one side, so you'd knock down, and you'd have a tighter toe on this side, depending on your foot shape. But we're gonna leave it quite symmetrical. So we're just gonna put a normal upright heel um, on this shoe. So when I'm working concave, I generally think about it like a bit of flat, but with four corners. So rather than with a bit of flat, both your corners are next to each other, with your concave, obviously, this one's moved further across. So you've got your one corner on your foot surface and the other corner on your foot surface. And then you've got this corner on your ground surface and this corner on your ground surface. Now, a lot of people get into a bit of a state thinking about sort of heel shape and they can't quite work out sort of angle of heel check. Um, but when you're working on angle of heel check, we're always trying to fit our shoes, the heel buttress always fits in the middle of the section. And what sort of defines our shape of heel is generally the angle at the back half of the shoe, the heel quarter comes into the heel. So if you've got a very wide foot, for example, it's going to come out and it's going to come on. Um, so then you'd have quite a short heel check. So we're always going to work into the centre, but we can adjust this area of heel check by coming further down if we want, or further up there. So short, sort of in the middle, or a long heel check.
but you always want to be working it into the middle. A lot of people make the mistake of checking the heel a lot further over. And then all you're doing, you're removing all the steel that you want to the heel buttress to sit on. So we're just going to forge the outside into the middle and we're going to adjust this point. So if we're going to put a short heel check on for a horse which is very angulated so it comes out and then on, we'd put quite a short heel check on, less angle, we can come a bit further down. If we've got quite a straight foot we can come really far down and put quite a big heel check on because it'll be less angle to the foot. But we're always going to be working into the middle of the section. So I usually start on my foot surface corner, so I'll just start working it into the middle, keep it level as we go. Still on my foot surface, just work that corner around. You can always make the check longer, so you're better off staying short until you need to. So now I can work on my ground surface, keeping the shoe level. Work on this corner now, so you have to lean your hammer over. It's going to be a hammer finish heel. And then you can get a couple of knockbacks. Now if you wanted to exaggerate this check, because it's a very straight foot, we can come back even further. But I'm going to keep it nice and short. And the way to do that is to just bring your hammer around so your hammer shaft is sort of parallel with the anvil edge and then you can get in nice and short on that heel check there now if you start leaning heels over so if you come around that angle there if you start leaning heels over and working this way and this way then what you're going to do you're going to put a hollow in your foot surface so it's very important to keep it very straight on the anvil so you don't put those hollows in right we're going to turn our branch um, our quarter is going to be roughly in the middle from the toe to the heel now what we're going to do I've drawn a line as a reference point on the top of the bick and you always want to be working on top of the bick you don't want to be reaching round because you're not going to be using your correct sort of strength and you've got to make it more difficult and be less consistent the way you turn it so what you want to do you've got your toe bend your toe bend fits now we know that because we use the bick so you're going to find a bit of the bick that your toe bend fits on you're going to hold your tongs at roughly the angle that you're going to end up with your branch and we're going to work on the gap just past that line so we're going to be coming down just past this line and we're going to be dropping our tongs every time we hit it and the shoe will just follow the shape of the bick now if you want a very round shoe you'd come a little bit further around you could work straight over the bick if you've got a very long shaped foot then you would come across the bick and work across the bit that way and it'll make it make it slightly straighter so we're going to keep our tongs not covering the entire section like that because we won't be able to get our toe onto the bit so tongs only holding on to that part of the metal find the bit of the bit that your toe fits on and incredibly important to keep your tongs moving and keep them up at this angle. You can always level your shoes and start to buckle it. But you never want to get in a situation where your tongs are past 90 degrees. So once you've got your branch turned, all done with your tongs, just rotating it around. We want to put our toenails in. So I've just drawn a line on the anvil, as you can see, that passes all the way through the bottom edge of the concave. My stamp 
is going to go onto that line. More pitch in the toe. Then we're going to find our widest point. If you can't find your widest point, and bring it over to the edge of the anvil there. It's going to be the bit that touches the edge of the anvil. So it's going to be around about there for the heel now. Not as much pitch this time. And then we're going to go in the middle of the two. So pitch is not quite as much as the toe now, but a bit more than the heel. Then we're going to go through our fritchel. Same amount of pitch. Keep our shoe level, but gentle, concave, you've got to be so careful. Make sure that inside edge doesn't ride up. And then back to the bick with our tongs, only part way on our section, so it doesn't get in the way of the bick. And we're gonna work again on top of the anvil, so we've got our tongs very high to start with. And we're just gonna start where our toenail was, just to forge in any lumps and bumps. We'll go all the way round to the heel. And what we're looking for, we're looking for the middle of our heel to be in line with our toenail. So in there. So work on our foot surface, keeping our check short, we can always make it longer if we need to. Forge it into the middle. Gentle level. Now we can work on our ground surface. Now with concave, you're sort of forming a hill rather than forging, you're sort of bending those edges in. And now we're going to safe it off. So we're just going to lean our hammer over without narrowing our section. We're just going to fold that edge in. And you have to adjust your hammer to get that edge. Make sure that last bit the safe in is just folded in because you don't want to leave a sharp edge. bob punch clip on so we get a bob punch lean it back slightly and just push that bubble out now some people put it over the edge of the anvil I just push a bubble out that way and that's the bit I'm going to draw into a clip so I'm going to use my hammer and I'm going to be working on this edge and I'm going to be getting that onto the anvil until I've got a decent base to work on. So I'm going to be transferring this onto the anvil. I have to come around this side of the anvil because it's the only sharp edge I've got left. So I'm going to transfer the base of that clip onto the flat. And now we've got our base on there, I'm going to use the heel of my hammer to pull that clip towards me. Right. 
bringing that clip towards me, but I'm not working on the tip yet. You want to leave all the strength in your tip. Slowly get in there. Now I'm working on the tip slightly. Now I'm going to go back to the base and just flatten the whole clip out. Get rid of all those hammer marks. Just set either side of your clip because that just levels it. So either side of the clip. And then just work behind the clip before you've set it on. Make sure that you've got no sole pressure. And then lean it back on the anvil. And when I'm setting clips on, I generally go over them probably three times. So I work from one side to that side. And then again, right at the base. Don't try and do it all in one go. So we've worked from the base of the clip and we've just set it on to the angle of the foot. Now if you need to take an extra heat, just to have a little bit of shape up, then you can use your bic to shape up your shoe. I usually start on my clip, just run round to my quarters. When you get to your quarters, and obviously you're changing then, you're going to start working down. So we've worked up to that line, and now we're working down. And then exactly the same on the other side. So from the clip, so we're in front of the line that's in the middle, working up to the quarters, and then we're working past the quarters to the hill. Make sure it's level. Clean it up a little bit. And it should fit a number five, once a back pressure, I think. But you're looking for a fit for a sort of about number five, really. 